What's up, guys? Welcome to World's Finest, brought to you by the Comic Collectors Guild. I am your host. You guys know me as the Superman. My name is Jake, and joining me, as always, is my co-host, Lee Lawson, known as the Batman. Lee, how are you today, my friend? I'm doing great, man. Excited to be here, as always. Absolutely. So, have you guys ever asked yourself, like, I've gone through all these superheroes and all this stuff. Is there ever like some new ones that I can check out or are there any characters that I'm missing out on? Well, this is the show for you. Lee, why don't you tell these guys what we're going to be talking about today? Jake, you're absolutely right, because today we are venturing into the DC universe. Jake and I turn loose our team of experts to dig through all the corners in the DC universe to find 10 heroes that we've Feel now deserve their time in the light. And when I mean the experts, I'm talking about Jake and myself. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So these are just some guys that are little known. Some of them have been around for a very long time, but they're yeah. very cool characters that you'll notice as time goes that have actually been inspirations for more of the no more notable characters that we know now. But these are 10 DC characters that we recommend. These are not in a particular order, so we're just going to yeah. break it down into 10. But uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm excited to hear your five, Lee. And uh, I'm just going to kick this thing off with the number 10 hero, and that is the Shadow. Uh, this guy actually appeared as a uh, narrator of a detective radio show back in 1930. Became so popular that they actually uh, hired this guy to... Um, Walter B. Gibson to develop like a backstory that they could create a comic. So in 1931, Shadow Comics number one was born. And really think about that, guys. This guy was seven years before Superman. He was before Batman. He was really the originator. Uh, his alter ego is Kent Allard, uh, and he is an expert detective, skilled marksman, hand-to-hand -hand combatant, and the master of disguise and stealth. If he sounds a little familiar uh, to a guy you might know, that is because uh, he was actually a huge inspiration for the creation of Batman. Uh, everything from his look to the Batcave to basically what his powers are. Inspiration of the Shadow was a big part of the Batman storyline. And actually later in uh, the comic books, we find out, just as we find out in the animated show, Beware the Great Ghost, um, Batman really idolized the Shadow. He modeled himself around the Shadow, and growing up, that was always his hero. And then in some iterations, Batman actually gets the, sh uh, the Shadow to come out of retirement and fight side by side with him. So it's really cool because they're both master, master detectives, extremely powerful with the fists and their combatant skills, <laughs> and uh, just a very cool monta if you're a big fan of the dark knight the shadow is for you and that is why he's number 10 so lee let's get on to the number nine character that we recommend for these guys sure man but you know who could forget the old classic 90s film from or was it 90s yeah of the shadow with alec baldwin oh yes absolutely yeah 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 pretty pretty cool movie in its own yeah right, you know what i mean it was supposed to kick off a franchise unfortunately just didn't get there but yeah it was a good movie i enjoyed it. he's he's got a cool like outlaw look to him with like the red bandana and the, i yeah. mean he's got a great look so who knows maybe they'll maybe they'll do him you know justice one day <laughs> little reboot all right there you go Moving into number nine, as you said, we've talked about the wackiest, craziest hero out there, guys, Plastic Man. Um, I actually first encountered Plastic Man back in the 80s because of the old Saturday morning cartoon. Um, and, was, and then they incorporated him into DC. But it was it, he definitely is one of the wackiest heroes out there, as I said. He actually made his first appearance in Police Comics number one in 1941. Uh, started off as a criminal uh, named Eel O'Brien. Uh, during a break-in at the chemical plant, Eel got shot in the arm and was saturated with a mysterious chemical. Uh, he, he got away. He was able to escape, but it passed out. When he woke up, he actually discovered that he had the ability to stretch and could really manipulate his body into uh, any form, which really helps him stand out from DC's other stretching hero, Elongated Man. You know, while Elongated Man can stretch, that's really all he can do. Actually, Plastic Man can literally become anything from a desk to a tree. He can stretch his body and skin to become as flat as a pancake or even condense his body to straight down to like any type of portable size. Uh, due to his elasticity, bullets bounce off of him with ease. Um, he's also able to kind of re 
sculpt or retort his face and which allows him to go undercover. Uh, unbeknownst to a lot of people, actually, he's really got an incredible analytical mind and which makes him a pretty good detective. He's also one of, again, the wackiest character out there due to his crazy sense of humor and wisecracks. Um, he's really been known to be affiliated with uh, teams such as Justice League and the Terrifics. Uh, yeah, so that is why I chose Old Plastic Man here at number nine. I guess it's like a big stretch Armstrong, Mr. Fantastic, <laughs> Elongated Man, Plastic Man. They like to stretch these guys out. So uh, yeah. I like, to, but I think it's really cool that he has more than just being able to stretch. He actually oh, yeah. has a lot more going for him, uh, which is interesting. Uh, I guess they take some of that. Reed Richards, I, I'm not sure how time frame he was with the Fantastic Four, but I'd be curious if there was any like homages when creating Plastic Man or for Mr. Fantastic towards the tube since they're kind of similar. Yeah, no, Plastic Man definitely was a um, couple of, uh, a few years ahead of uh, old Reed Richards for sure. Oh, yeah. you know, he yeah. had been one of the stretch, one of the most, uh, one of the first uh, elastic type stretchable heroes out there. Yeah, so he's yeah. definitely an interesting character for sure, dude. Uh, well, I appreciate you going on the stretch and uh, bringing <laughs> out Plastic Man. I'm going to go with number eight. Uh, this guy you might have heard of, but that is Dr. Fate. This guy is a founder of the Justice Society of America. He's also been in the Justice League, and he debuted in 19, uh, 1940, More Fun Comics, number 55. He's a really cool character, guys. We're talking about Kent Nelson. He's kind of the main Dr. Fate, even though we've had some other iterations, but Kent Nelson is really the guy, especially in the Golden Age. He basically found this sir uh, sarcophagus in a temple with his father, uh, and there was a lever beside it. When he pulled it, this gas came out and ended up killing his father. And the magical spirit or ghost of Naboo, uh, which is a ba uh, big ancient basically being, uh, you know, felt bad. And in a way to repay Kent, he gave him the powers in the helmet of Dr. Fate. And Dr. Fate is made up of really three uh, magic kind of pieces of armor that give him the powers that he has. So we have the helmet of fate, which basically links Naboo to Kent while he's wearing it. Uh, the Amulet of Anubis, which basically gives a lot of magical abilities, and then the Cloak of Destiny, uh, which grants flight, super strength, and vulnerability. Uh, he can also um, levitate objects. He doesn't age. He's a very, very powerful being. He was in the Injustice 2 video game, uh, so you guys might have caught him there. He's made some brief appearances from time to time, but a very powerful character. He's known as one of the more powerful characters in the dc world and in my opinion one of the coolest looking especially with that like trinity of yeah. pieces of equipment that make dr fate who he is so uh that's why he's uh number eight on the list we have dr fate and uh you guys should definitely check him out dude yeah i actually first encountered dr fate back you know during the superpowers there was a toy line dc toy line called superpowers okay. and then it was a they of course did a uh, comic book out of it and then that was actually like the le next iteration of what yeah. the super friends was so anyway right. i got to know him from there um and then of course he had a great run also in the justice league uh, reboot that was kind of in the 80s where I, there might be some other heroes that were in that particular team that I talk about here coming up. But yeah, I like Dr. Fate. I love the version of him in Injustice, as you mentioned. Yeah, yeah great character. For uh, sure, who could forget the live action, actually? He oh, actually yeah. popped up in uh, in Smallville. You know? Oh, yes, he did. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yes, right. Yeah. Good call on that. Yeah, very yeah, nice. Yeah, All yeah. right. So, very who, cool. who you got next, dude? All right. For me, we're talking about a character who some of you guys might know, but I definitely feel like he needs to be, have a bigger star than he does, uh, the Atom. Um, uh, for this particular one, I'm going to focus on the Silver Age of Heroes. Uh, he de debuted in Showcase number 34, uh, 34, I believe it was, 1961. So um, Ray Palmer is what I'm talking about. He was a research scientist. He created what they call like a white dwarf lens, and this gave him the ability to control his own mass and size. Uh, he wore the white dwarf lens in his belt. Uh, with the belt, he could shrink down to microscopic or even, microscopic or even subatomic levels while retaining the same, you know, normal mass size strength, which again results in like superhuman strength for him. Right. Yeah. Um, it allows him to become light enough to float on air. He can shrink down enough to ride phone signals, photons to travel long distances. Um, so after the miniseries crisis, actually miniseries, I'm sorry, identity crisis, uh, where Ray experienced some pretty traumatic events, 
uh, which if you guys have not read that, you please go check it out. It's a fantastic miniseries, pretty dark for something in DC, and that's saying something. Uh, but he, yeah. after that, yeah, you know, after that, he actually disappeared from Earth and traveled throughout the multiverse. And while he was gone, Ryan Choi, who was a colleague of Ray's, actually uh, came across the Atom Belt and started using it. And he embarked on his own adventures while taking up the name of the taking up the mantle of the Atom. Uh, both Ray and Ryan have shown up in live action. Ray, of course, was played by Brandon Routh. Uh, the he debuted on the TV show Arrow, was spun off in The Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, Ryan Choi made his live action debut in Batman vs. Superman, but he also debuted in the Arrowverse over the winter in uh, the Crisis on Infinite Earths there. Right. Um, there he was just playing scientist Choi. He didn't actually do Adam, but the fact of the matter is he is in the universe and we could very well see him again. Um, but known affiliations, team affiliations have been Justice League of America, Suicide Squad, Teen Titans, Indigo Tribe, just to name a few. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. I think Ryan Choi is definitely going to be used. Uh, you know, Zack Snyder's te uh, teased him in the Justice League film, making an appearance big time, way maybe more prominent role. So I'd be curious if we actually see him as Adam uh, within that Justice League movie. And if you notice some ties between uh, maybe Ant-Man and him, yeah. uh, I would say even stronger than Ant-Man uh, with his being able to shrink down into different sizes as well as attain mass, but keep his strength in the yep. level of uh, how small he could get, actually, I think some makes him even more powerful than ant-man so it's funny there's these you know marvel and dc with very similar subjects uh, the guy that's on my list is definitely not in the marvel universe for sure if you hear gone gone the form of man rise the demon etrigan you will get etrigan the demon made his first appearance created by jack kirby in 1972 the demon number one we're talking about jason blood etrigan the demon you guys might have called him recently in the justice league Do uh, dark apocalypse war movie um he's definitely a big part of the justice league dark as well as the demon knights uh which a lot of people you know don't know about the demon knights but definitely check them out he is super strong so this guy has enhanced superhuman strength he can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe and fight wonder woman and superman so uh, the crazy thing about him is he has this power within his skin where basically no matter what pain you inflict on it, he actually enjoys it. It feels like pleasure to him. So no matter what you're doing to this poor guy, he's just enjoying what you're throwing at him. <laughs> and he's just get back. On top of that, he has a high degree of resistance to injury. You know, So it, it does take a lot to actually injure him. But uh, he can spew fire from his mouth. He has a very high command of magic, uh, enhanced fangs and claws. Um, super speed, agility, um, energy blast, and basically he has a very strong connection with the magic that helps him become basically immortal. Um, you see him, you know, just blow through people with ease in the Apocalypse War movie, and it really just takes him going toe to toe with Wonder Woman for him to actually even be anyway thrilled to even go to combat because he just is so powerful and basically wipes everybody out with no problem uh he also made a brief appearance actually in the batman animated series i believe in season three or four uh we see him we see jason blood in that relationship so very cool character uh, a lot darker than a lot of the if you looked at him you'd be like oh i could do the villain but he's actually a hero yeah. And um, I personally really like this guy. He's very interesting and uh, really love the way they uh, used him in Apocalypse War. So Etrigan the Demon, check him out. Yeah, man. He's always been an outlier. You know what I mean? He's definitely yeah. been out there. Um, and he's definitely come a little bit more in prominence nowadays with, the, as you mentioned, in Justice League Dark. Um, yeah. I think we might even see him in the live action movie. I love the animated movie you spoke of, as well as he yeah. made an appearance in the, and I think you said this, the Batman animated series was also pretty awesome. So yeah, yeah he, I definitely he, like the character. He'd be uh, great in like in an in injustice game too. I would love to see him and like Hellboy go at it. I think that would, that be, would be cool. That would be cool, right? But uh, let's move on to your next choice. Who you got? I got Blue Devil, my friend. He made his first appearance in Firestorm number twenty-four, uh, volume number two. This is like a preview pullout, I believe, in June of nineteen eighty-four. Um, in his original appearance, appearance Daniel Cassidy, uh, he was a stuntman who designed the Blue Devil costume for a movie titled, what else? Blue Devil. <laughs> while, while they were on the set of the movie, they were actually attacked by the demon Nibiros. And while Daniel was fighting him, he actually got hit by like some type of demonic energy, which grafted the suit to his body. Wow. Um, at, yeah, so after Crisis on Infinite Earth, so his origin was slightly tweaked, as although he was still a stuntman, 
He was descended from this family who really, for many moons out there, had kind of kept the world safe from dangerous artifacts. Um, his grandfather, Liam, actually was responsible for the legacy at one time. Um, uh, Daniel was actually a stuntman on his grandfather's movies. Uh, and what his grandfather was, was, you know, again, he was protecting this, the, the responsible for the legacy of these artifacts. And instead of what he did, the grandfather did was actually make horror films about them and made people laugh at them as opposed to really believing in them or respecting them. But yeah. while Daniel was actually on the stunt uh, on the set of his grandfather's movie, um, he actually started wearing one of the artifacts. Of course, it was the blue devil suit. Uh, the suit is actually the skin of a demon named Nibiru's, which my friend, you just spoke about, uh, Etrick of the Demon. And Etrick of the Demon is a person responsible for removing the skin of, of, of Nibiru's, which actually become, you know, later on becomes Blue Devil's suit, aka skin. Yeah. So um, once his grandfather got killed, he actually put the suit on to avenge his grandfather who was mur murdered by Tobias Whale. Tobias Whale, you guys might know, is one of Black Lightning's main foes. He and Blue Devil teamed up. They took Whale and the Barrows down. And after that, Dan continued to continue his crime fighting career as Blue Devil. He actually later becomes an actual demon when he makes a deal with the devil, sacrificing his soul that's so that he could save millions of lives. Uh, with the powers from the suit, uh, he of course, the suit enhances his strength, gives him durability, gives him accelerated healing, really allows him to fly. Uh, he also has a trident that really shoots flames out as well. Some of his teams that he's been affiliated with are Shadow Pack, Justice League of America, Justice Society of America, Sentinels of Magic, and the Spirit Squad. Yeah, so Blue Devil Man, he's a fun character. I used to read him back in the day. Uh, but yeah, that's why I chose him as number five. Oh, that's a great choice. I got to admit, I don't know that much about Blue Devil, but he's got some Ghost Rider vibes I'm, I'm getting from that. Uh, I would. Be, it seems like he'd be cool to pair with Etrigan, you know, to see those two. And I, and I like, I'm noticing a lot of these, like, um, you know, ancient beings or mythology kind of things that create these characters. So very, very cool. Um, for me, my next choice is a guy that you might have caught in Batman, maybe even Justice League. That is the question. Um, his first appearance was in Charlton Comics, Blue Beetle number one in 1967. Uh, his alter ego is Charles Victor Zaz, not to be confused with uh, Zaz from the Batman storyline, but Charles Victor Zaz, uh, who fought in Hub City. And then briefly speaking of Batman, if you remember the detective Renee Montoya, at one point in time, she actually took up the mantle of the question. But the main person that's been the question over the years has really been uh, Charles Zaz. He's been in LAW, the Justice League, and then recently in comics within the last five or ten years has been a part of the Black Lantern Corps, uh, which is really interesting. He's a master of martial arts. He's one of the best detectives in DC, and he really specializes in interrogation. Um, and a really interesting fact on him, one of my favorite characters uh, who in his own right is very underused and I want to see a lot more is Rorschach. He was actually based off of the question and actually if you see a picture of them side by side, they both have the trench coat, the, the mask that just kind of, um, you know, blocks their face. And, is, and it's interesting because when he originally started, uh, he was basically cursed uh, by the gods of – they took away his sight and his ability to talk. But it's been changed over the years to an actual mask that just kind of converts him more. He can actually speak, and, you know, that's why he's a master interrogator now. But um, – Basically, in his first comic, which is interesting, he went up against Lady Shiva. Now, if you guys don't know who she is, she's literally known as the best hand hand combatant in DC. She trained Batman at one mm -hmm. point. So uh, there you go. Uh, but anyways, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with her, got his ass just wrecked. <laughs> and uh, she threw him in a river and then basically fell bad and saved him and then uh, sent him off to a guy named Richard Dragon to be trained. And uh, that's really where he learned his uh, fighting skills as well as his detective skills as well. Um, another fun fact about him is speaking of Batman is he actually dreamed uh, in, in a comic storyline. He had dreams about fighting side by side with Batman. He loved the detective and, who, you know, kind of who Batman was, was who doesn't Batman's the man and uh, Batman visits him and uh, basically tells him like, dude, this is not a part time job. Like you need to like get with it. Like, you know, the most Batman stuff facts that he's going to say uh you're either all in this life or you're not this is not a game blah 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 and basically tells him uh to go to work and uh you know stop playing around so very cool that it, you know his dreams kind of got shattered there but a very 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 uh skilled detective and uh he has a very unique look to him i mean he's like a blank face so he's kind of creepy in some ways but uh he's a he's been around for a while and i'm going with the question 
Dude, I, I actually really enjoyed the question, which he, they focus a lot on him in the Justice League animated cartoon. Yes. Um, you know what I mean? That was an awesome portrayal that I thought they did of him. He hasn't really done any live. There was always rumors he was going to pop up in live action like an arrow at some point. Yeah. Of course, that never materialized. But yeah, I've, um again, another character that's been in the shadows, no pun intended, from the earlier hero. But, yeah. <laughs> but, but um, you know, he definitely uh, was starting to really kind of get mainstream with the Justice League cartoon. And and then uh, I'd love to see, can't wait to see what they do with next. Oh, He's yeah. Absolutely. Somebody. Yeah, absolutely. So we're in the top three now. So let's kick it off with uh, the number three character. All right, man. Well, number three, um, he would hate to be number three because he's always thinks he's number one. We're talking about yeah. Booster Gold. Um, his, psychic, his secret identity when he chooses to use it is Michael Carter. Uh, he's originally from the 25th century. Uh, he was a football star in college. Looked like he was going places, but a series of unfortunate events uh, really in placed him and landed him in jail, unfortunately. Um, after jail, he took a job at the Metropolis Space Museum as a security guard. And that's really where uh, he decided to steal a few artifacts from the museum, took a security robot and used one of the devices to travel back in time to the 20th century and really change his life. Um, he set up to become a hero using those borrowed properties. <laughs> so um, with, the, with the stuff that he took, it gives him a lot of powers. Obviously, he's got the power suit. Um, he's got the, it's an intelligent AI. He's got a helpful source of information, can shoot concussive lasers, uh, fly, hack into all sorts of devices and gadgets. Um, so, yes, he's definitely a great sidekick to have around. One thing about Booster, I think, that taints him, uh, taints him uh, in the view of other heroes is the fact that he's always trying to monetize his heroics you know what i mean there's been times where he's been known to wear a company logo in his costume as long as he's getting paid to do so um but yeah he's been and that reason you know people don't really take him as serious uh but when you know push comes to shove he's a hell of a hero he's a hell of a hero uh he can be taken as kind of a douchebag he's got yeah. a very big ego you know what i mean he likes to show off and things like that but a cool looking character he's got a, a good head of hair on him i give him that so a uh, very good <laughs> choice there uh, yeah. with Mr. Gold, man. So uh, my last choice here at number two, I have one of the most powerful beings in all of DC. Uh, we're talking about the Spectre. Uh, this guy was uh, made his first appearance in Mon More Fun Comics number 52 in 1940. So not long after Superman and uh, Batman made their debuts, the Spectre is right after. Um, he has even been portrayed by Hal Jordan and Oliver Queen at times. Uh, his main alias is Jim Corrigan. Um, we've seen him actually in Arrowverse in Crisis. We see um, Oliver Queen become the Spectre. Uh, but we're going to just focus on Jim Corrigan. Uh, Jim was killed, actually. He was murdered in uh, comic books. And uh, when he entered the afterlife, he basically wanted exact justice on the people who killed him. Uh, he was basically got his wish granted. He was given powers. Uh, really, he's more of a ghost or a spirit. Um, he's known as the spirit of vengeance. Um, and they call him the Spectre. He was a founding member of the Justice Society of America. He's been in Justice League Dark. He's even been in the Justice League for a brief time. And um, like I said, he's one of the most powerful beings in all of DC as the abilities of the God. He can manipulate time and space, uh, control matter. Uh, he has invulnerability. He doesn't age. He has limitless strength. And he's really immune to pretty much any damage. I mean, really, the one of the only few characters that can really beat him are like Superman, uh, Dr. Manhattan. I mean, there's very, very, I mean, you can count on one hand, really, the, the name of characters that can actually beat him. Um, but as I said, he's more of an angel ghost, and they actually portray him as the angel of vengeance uh, in the in the uh, storyline. So um, he can change hosts. It's very similar to like a lantern ring, hence how Hal and, and uh, Oliver were, were able to be the Spectre at one point. But a very cool character. He's kind of dark. He really is on that verge of villain and, and hero. But uh, I would definitely recommend, if you guys want a super powerful being, check out the Spectre, man. Yeah, man, he's been known. I, I, I do like that character, um, but he's been known to be pretty gruesome in a way that he punishes. You know what I mean? He's the vengeance oh, yeah. guy and the way he punishes certain certain bad guys. Uh, there's been some pretty horrific stories out there. Uh, Spectre is, and I, I do like him a lot. I do I definitely remember when he had that run as Hal Jordan or when Hal Jordan was him. I'm glad oh, yeah. to see Hal Jordan back now as, <laughs> yes. as, of course. Yeah, so, but yeah, no, great character. Definitely like him. For sure, man. Well, let's go so, to number one. Exactly. Number one talking about the blue beetle there's actually been three blue beetles guys the first one was created by fox feature syndicate debuted in i believe 1939 in mystery comics number one ran for about 60 issues blue beetle was dan garrett um who 
gained his powers from a special vitamin. Uh, so he didn't, not only did he have a comic book during this time, but he also had a comic strip and radio serial, which were pretty huge. Uh, Chong Comics eventually gained the rights to him, changed his origin completely. They debuted this character in June of 1964 in you know, the comic, of course, called Blue Beetle. This Darren Garrett was an archaeologist who got his powers from a mystical scarab. Uh, the scarab gave him super strength and vision, flight and the ability to generate energy blast. The second Blue Beetle, who I am most familiar with, was created by Charlton and later taken over by DC Comics. This one was known as Ted Cord, and I'm a huge fan of his Justice League and Justice League International run. Um, he was actually a student of Dan Garrett's, took up the mantle of Blue Beetle after Dan died and passed in the responsibility of Blue and being Blue Beetle. Um, he took up the mantle, but Dan wasn't able to pass on the scarab to him. So in lieu of having any powers, Ted being a gifted athlete, you know, he's awesome hand-to-hand -hand combatant. Um, he's got a, he's a genius level inventor. So again, in lieu of having powers, he actually used science to create a lot of various devices to help him fight crime. Um, as I mentioned, he was in a, a hugely successful Justice League run, and this is where he and Booster Gold, who I just talked about a little bit ago, they pretty much became synonymous with each other, as there was definitely more of a comedic slant. Um, Beetle and Booster were at the center of most of those stories. If you talk to any comic fan and say, what about the blah -ha, ha time frame, they know exactly what you're talking about. Um, they were definitely um, a great pair, man. Um, they actually debuted together in Smallville. Um, of course, that was really more of the other Blue Beetle, which I'm about to move into, because uh, Ted Cord was, unfortunately for me and the rest of the world, he was killed by Maxwell Lord in the beginning of Infinite Crisis. So, which brings us to the third Blue Beetle. Again, like I said, this Blue Beetle and Booster Gold both debuted in Smallville in the same particular episode, but this Blue Beetle is Jaime Reyes. I uh, made his first appearance in Infinite Crisis number three in 2006. Uh, the Scarab found his way to Jaime after Ted Kor's murder. He found it in an abandoned parking lot, took it home with him while he was sleeping. Again, you guys know I'm not a big fan of body horror, but it bonded to his spine. To me, that is horrific. <laughs> <laughs> and the, this, yes, and that scarab gives him the powers that he has. Like anything like uh, the Blue Beetle armor, it's a special suit of armor, of course, uh, manifests on his body when he fights. Uh, it's able to shape shift, give him environmental protection. There's energy manipulation, antagonist adaptation, basically meaning like it gives him the ability to quickly adapt to whoever he's fighting. Um, he's been known to affiliate, be affiliated with some te uh, teams as Justice League of America, Extreme Justice, Living Assault Weapons, and Birds of Prey. Um, again, I, I, I've definitely become familiar with Jaime a bit and some of the new animated cartoons and stuff like that, the animated movies, because they focus more on him. Yeah. But Ted Kord is, will always be my Blue Beetle. I'm a big fan of the Reyes, man. He gives the Hispanics a good hero to look up to. And I really love that he's in the Titans. I love seeing him with like Beast Boy and, and Damien and, and all those guys. So really, really cool. Yeah. That, it's funny that it's kind of like one of those characters where the, we each have our own iteration of Blue Beetle. And I, I love this character. I think he's really, really yeah. cool. But uh, that's it, guys. Those are 10 characters that we recommend for you guys to check out. Really, really love all 10 of these guys. I, I really, really enjoyed, you know, diving deep into these characters and learning a little bit more myself about these guys. So if you have any questions, you know, about any of these characters or any more recommendations, please leave a comment. While you're at it, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, check out the website, www.comacollectorsguild.com. You can also check out all audio on Google Podcasts and Spotify. And we have a whole line of new swag here on T Public. So, uh, Rock your T-shirts if you're into characters uh, everywhere from Robin to Batman to Marvel characters. We got them all. So check out tpublic.com and search for Comic Collectors Guild. Uh, on our next show, we're going to be breaking down 10 Marvel heroes that we strongly recommend. So we're really excited to bring that to you guys. But uh, Lee, thank you so much for breaking down your five characters. It was a pleasure and a good history lesson, man. Hey, man. Same to you, my friend. Enjoy it as always. All right, guys, uh, we appreciate your time, and uh, until next time, keep hunting.